Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is an updated version of how to use Fill Flash color temperature orange gels for bird photography. So Fill Flash is necessary because as you can see in this picture, we've kind of got a dark background and the bird is dark gray. It's a rainy Pacific Northwest day, kind of cloudy, kind of dark. The colors on the bird are kind of muted because it's just a gray overcast day. A little pop of fill flash though brings out the colors in the bird, lightens up the bird enough. It doesn't do much with the background and we don't really want it to. To get to this point, we set our cameras up on manual mode, then we set the exposure for the ambient condition, the ambient light conditions that we have. And then we set up the fill flash. When we set up the fill flash, we want to press the mode dial. We want to get to ETTL or TTL, which just means through the lens so that the light meters work together. And then you want to use high speed sync. And in the Olympus camera system and flash systems, FP is high speed sync. This allows my shutter speed to be greater than 1 250th of a second or 1 200th of a second. So always try to use high speed sync when you're using fill flash. The next thing that I want to do is I want to dial in some exposure compensation and I'm going to go minus three because I don't want to blow out any of the whites of the birds. I'm pretty close to the birds most of the time within 30 or 40 feet. So I start at minus three and then if the exposure can take more flash, I will add light to it, but I don't want to start off with too much light. The whole thing here is to try to get it so that the bird is brighter. You've added a highlight to the eye. The bird colors are brighter but you don't want it to be obvious that you're using flash. So with this female wood duck, I used flash, but it's not obvious that I used flash, but I did bring out more of the color in the back of the wings here just by brightening up that part of the bird. Now most of the time when you're using fill flash or you're using a flash with your cameras in the outdoors, people tell you to use off-camera flash. And so to do that, you've got to have an off-camera flash cord that attaches to the camera goes up and then it attaches to the bracket here and then the flash attaches to the flash cord. And a frontal view of this is that here's the camera, there's the flash cord, it goes up and then the flash attaches to that. The greater the distance between the lens and the flash makes it so that you have less red eye in the bird. And then a lot of people say, look, if you don't use a tripod, how do you get off camera flash? Well, you can get these brackets. These are from Wimberley, but you can get these brackets that attached to the bottom of the lens foot. They go over and they'll go up and then you've got a greater distance between the lens and, and the flash unit. This works. There's a couple of problems with it. Your lens and camera are not balanced anymore. It's heavier and it can be very awkward. And then here's the side view of that. So I've got the flash bracket attached to the foot. It comes up. I've got quite a bit of distance here that the flash unit and the camera lens are, there's a lot of distance there, so I'm shooting at different angles and there's gonna be less red eye with the bird. I don't use off-camera flash as much as I used to. If I'm using a tripod, I use it, but if I'm just walking around, I just put the flash straight on the camera and if I end up with too much red eye, I deal with that in post-processing. And it's pretty easy to use the red eye tool in Lightroom or change the color of the eye a little bit. It's not that difficult. Here's an image of an American Robin that I took this with a little bit of fill flash. It brightened up the colors on the bird. It just improved everything about it. And you can see that the little water in the grass, the dew is sparkly a little bit. And that's all because there's a little bit of extra light coming in. Now this is what I used to use with my Canon system. I used the Better Beamer system and that's fine. It worked great for me for, for 20 years. I don't use it anymore because the Better Beamer side flanges here do not fit on the Olympus uh, flash units. The Olympus flash units have a rounder uh, sides to them and so I have to use something else. And so I've switched to the MagMod carriers. Now, my reluctance to use MagMod in the past is always because it takes up more room in my camera bag. It's a great system. Now that I need to use it, of course, I'm using it. So I bought three things. I bought the wildlife kit here, which has the Frenzel lens and the magnet and then the, um, you know, the, the spacer. And then I bought the CTO uh, color temperature orange gels and then I bought the mag gel holder. You know, you can put this color temperature orange filter right in the back of the holder here. But I don't do that because I want to be able to use daylight valued 
flash without a filter, and I want to be able to use filtered flash or warm light coming out of the flash unit. So that's why I bought the extra unit, and then you can just snap these together. It's magnetic, so they work really well, and I can change them out. I can go from daylight valued flash to color temperature orange flash really quickly. And then here's just a close up of the MagMod uh, one quarter color temperature orange gel inside of that little gel holder, and that's going to work out fine. Well, here's a picture of a ruby crown kinglet, and I'm underneath of a willow tree, and I'm on the inside, and it's very dark, and the bird's kind of flittering around, eating and feeding, and moving pretty rapidly, but I got a few shots of it with the flash, and the flash really brightened up the bird, and you can see that it's so bright in the background that if I hadn't used flash, we would have just had a silhouette of a bird, and so the fill flash really pulled out the details and the color of this bird. Now there's one problem with these flash units and using them outdoors and trying to get the light exactly where you want. And a lot of times these flash units, this hinge right in here, is not precise enough. You can see that the lens is, is level and pointed out towards the birds this way. This flash is actually pointed down and that's not going to help me very much. So what I've done is I've fixed it so that there's a little shim right in here, and that pushes this up, and so now, if I've got a bird that's 40 feet away, this is gonna go straight out towards the bird, and it's not gonna hit at 20 feet or 30 feet, it's gonna go exactly where I've pointed the lens to. And all I did with this shim was I had a little hardware shim for furniture, I broke off a little bit of it, I wrapped it with some gaff tape, and then that's, that's how I made my little shim. And then I just shoved it right in there, right in that gap, and I'll show you one more picture. That's the, the shim right in there with the gaff tape covering it. And you can see that this lens, this was pointed down some and now it's pointed straight out. So that's the downside to some of these flash units. It, it was an issue with Canon and it's the same thing, uh, same problem that I'm having with the Olympus flashes. And then here's a Peregrine Falcon taken on a really uh, cold, wet, rainy day in the winter time at uh, in the Pacific Northwest out on the outer coast. And you can see that the flash highlighted the water on the back of the bird. The flash brightened up the bird. The CTO gel warmed up the day so that it, it's, a nice, it's a nicer image this way than if it would have been super dark because of the rainy, cloudy weather and then uh, blue tones rather than this nice color temperature orange gel. If you want to learn more about bird photography, consider getting my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. If you want to take better bird pictures, hit the subscribe button and then the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this week. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.